So I've had my Tesla Solar and Powerwall for over a year now, so I think this would be a really good opportunity to just recap everything that's happened to me. Was it worth the purchase? Did they work well? Let's get right into it. First, I'm gonna talk about solar. So let's just make it easy. Here's my 2020 solar production and home usage for 2020. As you can see, every single month, typically, my solar production is less than what my house used, which was disappointing. But in 2020, you can see things kind of turned around. My solar production is higher than my home usage despite my system staying exactly the same. That's great. It's great to produce more energy than you use. So what actually happened? Like how did I improve my production? So what happened in the winter of 2020, my solar production went down so low. And what I realized is that, is that I had some trees by my house. And as the sun got lower in the sky, it was making the shadows from the trees ginormous and they were covering my whole house during certain times of the day so i made the decision to basically just cut down all of the trees on my side lot that way those solar panels are not affected as much and as you just saw like cutting on the trees really did help so if you're thinking about buying solar for yourself be super honest with yourself kind of observe your surroundings see where shade goes on your house if you can monitor it throughout the year to see what areas would be problematic. And as far as my actual electric bill, prior to those tree removals, my electric bill was still very cheap, you know, about $30. Um, as we got into the winter months where the shade was higher, my electric bill was kind of climbing back up there, but I don't think it ever went above $50, $60 with the solar panels. But since the trees got removed this year, Every single electric bill has been zero, which is great. That's kind of the goal of solar panels to 100% cover the usage of your house. And I did quotes in zero. I did that for zero because my electric company does charge you a minimum charge just to be connected to the grid. And for me, it's $9.25. So every single month in 2021, since I had the trees removed, I've had a $9.25 electric bill. So that's great. As I was editing this video, I noticed I did something very rude. I did not include my electric bill from the previous year when I didn't have solar. That is a great comparison. So if we look at it really quick, you can see my electric bill. Um, depending on the month, because I live in Florida and you use way more energy in the summertime, my electric bill varied from the low hundreds, you know, 120, 30, 40, 50 dollars. But then when we got into the summertime, um, it was in the 200, so, you know, 205, 250, 231. There is a bill for 452, but I think it's because I paid late and it combined two bills together. So just pretend that's like 225. So basically my bills went from as high as $250 a month to $9.25 with solar. That is great. That's cool. I really do not regret anything when it comes to purchasing my solar panels. I got the size perfectly right. Everything in my house is electric. My Tesla is, my hot water heater is, my stove, everything. I don't use natural gas at all. So literally everything in my house is powered by solar panels, which again is great to say and it's great to experience. And some of you guys may be wondering this, but no, after I got my solar panels installed, I did not have any leaks. I did not have any issues. There was no like problems with installation. Nothing crept up or I figured out they did something wrong. All of that was great. The only thing to keep in mind that in the springtime in Florida, pollen got really bad. So pollen like totally just covered the solar panels, but ultimately it didn't affect production much really. And once it rained, it washed it right off. A lot of people tell me I should be washing my solar panels, like literally spraying them with a hose from, from the ground, but it rains so much here in Florida, especially in the summertime. I just let mother nature take care of it. And so far I'm not seeing any type of hindrance to where it's really worth my time. So right now, after a year, have not cleaned them once myself. I've taken pine straw and maybe like a stick or something that fell on them. But as far as like thoroughly cleaning them, no, after a year, I haven't done it and I don't see a point to at this time right now. So 
Now let's talk about power walls. So power walls, it's important to know that you have to get them if you want your solar panels to operate if the grid goes down. So say if a hurricane hits my house and the power is out for a week. If I have solar panels only and no power walls, I cannot use the solar panels. Because the way they work, if you are connected to the grid only with solar panels, you have to cut them off because if workers are doing maintenance to the grid, your solar panels could back feed into the grid. If you're overproducing energy, where does it go? And if you need more energy, where does it go? So power walls just solve that problem. So if you want your house to work all the time, you need power walls. It just kind of completes the puzzle of solar. And as far as my power walls, they worked great. I can show you every single time they prevented my house from losing power. It was quite a few times in 2020 and so far in 2021. Now there hasn't been a super drastic outage. I did do about a 24 like forced outage myself just to test and that worked good. But as far as the grid going down without my control, I haven't really had a super long outage yet to really test that out. There was a time the electric company knocked on my door and they said that they were going to be turning my power off for a few hours because they had to do some maintenance on the power lines and they were actually installing a new pole. So they had to cut off the power to my house. And <laughs> I didn't have to say this, I know, but you know, when you spend the money on solar and power walls, you're gonna tell everybody. And I basically said, I was like, no, I have Tesla solar and power walls in my garage. You're going to cut my power, but I'm still going to have power to my house, which I think it was actually good to tell them because when you pull the power meter out, you would expect the power to stop and it doesn't. And my power meter is right by my air condition unit. So they probably would have been a little bit perplexed by that, like why that happened. But there you go. So that was probably the best experience so far I've had with my power walls keeping me online. But what I'm waiting for, I live in Florida, you guys know. What I'm waiting for, and it's bad to say this, but I'm waiting for a hurricane that comes and knocks out the power because that's when power walls are really going to pay for themselves and really show their true potential because as much as i you know don't wish destruction you know on my area it's going to happen i live in florida it's going to happen eventually even if you get a hurricane without much wind the constant rain is just going to saturate the ground and trees are going to topple over like it's just a fact the last hurricane I had was in 2017, Hurricane Irma. It hit us as like a category one in my area. Some trees did fall in my yard. My house had no damage at all. The roads were completely flooded, but um, I did lose power for several days. So just because like it doesn't really look that bad after a storm, you could still lose power for several days because it's gonna be a nightmare to fix all of you know, the fallen trees and all that stuff. So it's been four years since a major storm to hit. So just statistically, it's a matter of time. And when it does happen, I'll be sure to update you on how everything worked out. I have not experienced a major storm yet, but I have experienced something called storm watch mode. So Tesla has an ability to automatically trigger storm watch mode on your power walls. And what that does, it automatically keeps your power walls to a hundred percent it actually allows them to charge from the grid which isn't usually possible and then once the power walls at a are at a hundred percent your solar and your grid will power your house and your power walls will just chill there at a hundred percent waiting to provide you power if the grid goes off so i think that's a pretty cool feature and the other modes that you can use is self-powered and backup only mode. So I really enjoy self-powered mode because it gives you this very freeing feeling. If you set it on self-power mode, you're not touching the grid at all. Basically, your house is using solar energy during the day and then at night, it's using power from the power walls. If your power walls are full during the day though, your excess solar energy will go to the grid. So that's pretty cool. So basically you're using nothing from the grid and you're giving all your extra juice to it. And then another option that I do use from time to time is backup only mode. Basically when you pick backup only mode, it keeps your power walls at 100% at all times. 
and they basically just chill there and wait for the power to go out. You would pick this mode if you know you were concerned about losing power a lot or if you thought you were gonna lose power in the middle of the night and you want your power walls to be at 100% ready to go. I kind of flip flop back and forth, but I don't lose power that much. And it is really fun to say that I'm just completely independent of the grid. I'm using 100% renewable resources. That's cool in itself besides you know any type of physical benefits. And since I've had power walls for over a year now, Tesla has actually changed their policy. So if you have solar panels right now and you wanna buy power walls from Tesla, they will not allow that. And if you have nothing and you wanna buy power walls from Tesla, they will not allow that. The only way to get power walls right now, you have to buy a complete system, which is Tesla solar and power walls together. Now it sucks, but I think the reasoning they did that is because they're just very cell constrained. They don't have a lot of extra batteries because the demand for their cars is just increasing exponentially and they have not been able to catch up yet. So one downside I had with my power walls is that if you have people coming to your house to work on miscellaneous issues, they will try to blame your solar panels and power walls just because they're not familiar with them. So I had this ongoing issue with my air conditioning unit where it would start up and everything would run, but it would not cool. So like the compressor wasn't starting and the AC tech was quick to blame the solar panels and the power walls that they're the reason that this is happening because they're not familiar with it and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, dude, it's not that. Um, and I even troubleshooted that. I turned off my power walls. I put it in backup only mode so power walls were not touched at all. And I still had the same issue. But you know, if somebody isn't familiar with something and they can't figure it out, they're gonna blame the thing that they're not familiar with, you know? So that's one downside. Also too, keep in mind, if you get power walls, Tesla is typically going to install a sure start which basically allows your air conditioning unit to start with less power because if you have power walls only, they're obviously limited on power they can output to your AC to start and ACs do require a lot. So I did have a shore start installed which got removed by the air conditioning tech because they thought it could have been an issue, which turned out it was not an issue. <laughs> And what ended up fixing my problem was they installed a hard start to kind of force my compressor to start. The only issue with that is I think it actually requires more energy. So I need more power walls to, to make sure my air condition starts every single time. I personally have not had any issues with my air condition starting, but theoretically it should not be starting with my two power walls and no shore start. So that's just kind of odd, but I won't question it. <laughs> But okay, so a year later, my power walls. What do I think? What do I regret? What do I wish I did differently? So for one, so far, they have not paid for themselves. Like, yes, they have prevented me losing power for a few minutes or maybe even a few hours. And it is fun to operate off grid, but there has not yet been this wow moment where they have blown me away. And like I said, that's gonna be whenever a hurricane hits and we lose power for a week. That's when I'll be hyping it up to every single person I know. That's when my neighbors will be wondering why my lights are on and I'm doing everything and my air conditioning's running no problem. But of course, as time goes on, I have more opportunity to take advantage of them. Also too, now that Tesla seems to limit power wall purchases, I wish I just would have bit the bullet and bought three or four power walls instead of just two because what I didn't think about at the time, adding power walls does not just add more battery capacity, it adds more power. So every power wall you have is five kilowatts of power that can be outputted. So with my two power walls, that's 10. If I got four, that would be 20. So basically that just means I can run more stuff when the grid is off and I don't have to worry about it at all. Also, if you have a very power hungry air conditioning unit, or if you have a hard start installed like me, you just benefit from having more available power to go out to your very demanding 
uh, devices and electronics and appliances, whatever, you know? So get as many as you can afford because getting a second or third or additional one may be a little bit difficult depending on Tesla's supply. Okay, I've talked about Powerwall and solar separately. Let's talk about some things that kind of involve both of them. So the first thing to point out is that, yes, I did spend about $40,000 on my system for two power walls and a large solar setup, which is 11.3 kilowatts, which is 36 panels. Um, I spent $40,000, but you get a 26% tax credit. I got to claim 26% of that amount on my taxes, and I reduced my tax liability from a five figure amount to $1,000. So that was great in itself. In 2020, I really got into like the stock market and trading and stuff, which resulted in a lot of capital gains taxes I had to pay. So luckily the credit from the solar and the power walls really came in handy. Obviously, depending when you're watching this, where you live and all that, it's gonna um, vary but do not discredit the tax credits. They add up, especially because the tax credits count for solar and power walls together. As long as your power walls are attached to a system that uses solar energy, you can claim your power walls the same way you would do solar panels. So that is a great thing, especially when if you start adding, you know, two, three, four power walls, they get expensive. Um, and then next, I just want to comment on the app. The Tesla app is amazing. I probably use it way more than I should. I'm checking on it multiple times per day, just checking my solar, checking my power walls, checking to see if I had any type of grid outages. It's just addicting. Like It's almost like another form of social media for me to check. I check it that much. And a lot of people, when they hear me talk about solar and power walls, they talk about, you know, oh, it's not worth it. It takes so long to pay off. Solar, you do save money. And then once the solar panels are paid off, you have free electricity. Power walls, it makes it harder to like save money because there is a cost there. But the reason why I bought solar and power walls, I wanted the ability to run completely off grid. I wanted the ability to charge my Tesla, even if the power was cut. I want a full ecosystem. And it is so cool and so fun to say that your house, your Tesla, your stove, your dryer, your air conditioning, everything is powered by 100% renewable energy. Like it's just fun to know where the source of your power is coming from. Especially because a lot of people love to say that Teslas are powered by coal because coal comes from the grid, but that's a whole nother story. But it's just nice to know where your energy is coming from. And it's nice to know that I'm actually contributing to a better future. Some people may or may not agree with global warming, but you know, power walls and solar panels and just the whole ecosystem of Tesla, I think is really pushing to a better future. And if you've made it this far, um, I assume you're somewhat interested in Tesla solar and power wall. So I'm gonna put my referral code down below. If you use that, you will get a sign up bonus and I'll actually get something as well. So it'll help both of us out. So definitely check that out. Um, order some solar panels and power walls. You really won't regret it. And also, if you made it this far, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out a lot. And I'll put some more videos for you to watch right there. Hit my face right there to subscribe. Have a great day. See you later. Bye.